In this video, I would demonstrate how to perform a one-way or between groups analysis of variance with planned comparisons. Now this analysis is performed when we have one independent or grouping variable with three or more levels or groups and one continuous dependent or outcome variable. So the between groups indicates that we have different participants in each of the groups and the one way part of the title indicates there is only one independent variable. So in the case of our example here, we have three groups of students receiving three different types of instructional techniques, and then the outcome variable is a score on a final exam. So what we want to determine is, do any of the three groups create a significantly different higher or lower score than the other two groups on the final exam? Now what makes this technique unique is that we are going to use something called planned comparisons to examine differences between our independent variable groups as opposed to post hoc tests. As you may remember or know from one-way ANOVA testing, if we have statistical significance for the main fact for the independent variable, then we would try and examine to see if there are differences among the individual groups. So is group one different than group two? Is group two different from group three? So there are some situations where researchers, however, may be interested in only comparing specific groups. So for example, in this particular study uh, in which we have three groups, we might only be interested in comparing the effect of one intervention, group three, for example, compared to group one and two. This might also be used in a situation in which we have a large number of different interventions, maybe five or more different interventions, and we want to know whether the first intervention is superior to all the other interventions. And so in that situation, we might not be interested in comparing all the possible combinations of groups. We're just interested in only a subset of the possible comparisons. So in this case, we would do planned comparisons as opposed to post hoc tests. Now another reason we do this plan comparisons versus post hoc test is the plan comparisons tend to increase the, the statistical power of the comparisons we are going to make. When we do post hoc tests, they're, they, they're set a more stringent significance level to reduce the risk of a type 1 error, and so because of the large number of tests being performed. So planned comparisons tend to be more sensitive in detecting differences because the number of comparisons we're making has been reduced. So the choice of whether we use planned comparisons versus post hoc tests should be made before you begin your analysis. So it's not appropriate to try both and then see which results we, we prefer or are happier with. So in this demonstration, I'll go ahead and set up the, the one-way ANOVA and then when we get to the point at which we need to determine how we're going to compare our groups, I'll talk a little bit more about specifying the group comparisons or the plan comparisons that we're going to make. So again, we've got three groups of subjects receiving different instructional techniques and we're going to compare them on this numeric outcome of the final exam. So in order to perform this analysis, we in order to perform this analysis, we're going to go to the analyze menu select compare means and then one way ANOVA. Now we're going to take our dependent variable or outcome variable which in this case is final exam score and move that into the dependent list box. And we're going to take our independent variable or our category and move it into the factor box. Now next we want to click on the options button and we're going to click on descriptive homogeneity of variance and means plot. Then we click continue. In this case our next step is to then choose the plan comparison so we're going to click on the contrast button. And the next thing we need to decide is and as you'll see SPSS is asking us to indicate which particular groups you wish to compare. So in order to do this, we need to specify coefficient values. So the, the, how the process works is this. We need to, to give each group a code that will tell SPSS which comparison we would like it to make. 
So we need to decide which of the groups you wish to compare and then which we wish to ignore. In other words, not include in a comparison. So again, we have our three groups that are coded group one, two, and three. And so if I want to compare the third group with the other two groups, what I would then do is give coefficients for group number one of a minus one and then add that and then group number two would get a minus one and then group number three would get a two. Now the reason group one and two got a minus one is because those are the two groups we're going to combine and then compare to group number three and so the coefficients need to add up to zero. So if I want to take group 1 and 2 and combine them, then their coefficients will be the same. And then the third group will have a coefficient that will be different. But the coefficients need to add up to 0. So coefficients with different values are compared. Now if we wanted to ignore one of the three groups, we would get that coefficient of 0. But then we need to adjust the other coefficient values so that they still add up to 0. Now another example we might have is let's say I want to compare group 3 to group 1 while ignoring group 2. So I would have to change the coefficient values. So if I wanted to ignore group 2 but I want to compare group 1 and group 3, group 1 would have to get a coefficient of minus 1. Group 2, the one I want to ignore, would get a coefficient of 0. And then group 3 would have to get a coefficient of 1 so that our three scores still add up to 0. And so that will allow me to make a planned comparison between group 1 and 3 while ignoring group 2. Okay, but in this example, what I want to try and do is compare group 3 to group 1 and 2. So I want to come uh, click on the contrast button again. And so I want to give group 1 and 2 the same coefficient because I don't want them to be compared to one another. So group 1 gets a minus 1. Group 2 gets a minus 1. And now I want to compare these two groups together to group 3. So I need to give group 3 a coefficient that now creates a total of 0. So I give group 3 a coefficient of 2. So now we have a total of 0. So what this is going to allow me to do is compare group 3 to group 1 and 2. All right, once that's completed, I click continue. And again, this could be very different depending on your situation and certainly depending on the number of groups that you have. But SPSS does kind of give you a running total here, so it can make sure that the, the coefficients total up to 0 and it won't allow you to continue if they don't total up to 0. So you need to think out ahead of time which groups you want to plan or which groups you want to do the plan comparisons for and then which coefficients you will need to make sure you're doing the appropriate comparisons. Let's go ahead and click continue and then we click OK. Now as you can see in the output, the first output we get is the descriptive table and this is giving us the means for each of the groups as well as the confidence intervals. So you can see there are definitely numeric differences among the three groups. The next thing we can examine is the assumption of homogeneity of variance. So we can look at Levine's statistic here. And again, we want to make sure this the significance value is greater than 0.05 to assure that we've met that assumption. And we have. The significance value is 0.45, so we've met the assumption of homogeneity of variance. Now the next thing we need to do is look at the main effect. Is there a significant difference among the three groups? And so we go to the ANOVA table and we look at the between groups row, as we can see the significance value for that is less than 0.05. So there are significant differences somewhere among the groups. So what we want to try and determine then is group 3 significantly different than group 1 and group 2. So the next table we can look at is the contrast coefficients table. And this is where we can kind of double check to make sure the, the plan comparisons we've selected are appropriate. And remember, two groups that have the same coefficient are not going to be compared to each other. 
the groups that are going to be compared to each other are the groups that have different coefficients. So as we can see here, the math skill group and the confidence building group are not going to be compared to one another. What is going to be compared is the group work group and then the math skill group and the confidence building group together. Now the main table that we're interested in is titled contrast tests. Now, as we can assume equal variances, as we saw our Levine's test was not significant, we're going to use the first row in this table, the table, the row that's labeled assume equal variances. If we had violated the assumption that Levine's test examines, we would use the bottom row. So what we want to look for then is the significance value for our contrast that we specified previously. And so it would be this value here. And as we can see here, this significance level is less than 0.05. So we can conclude that there is a statistically significant difference between group 3 on the test score and the other two groups. Now, as we look back at the means, we go back up to the means in the descriptive table, we can see that the actual means are fairly large in difference. Group 3 had a, had a mean score in the exam of 45 versus a mean score of 38 for the other two groups. So this is a, a fairly large difference. We could also calculate effect sizes for this to get an indication of the magnitude of, of the difference. And how we would do this in order to calculate an, an at a squared effect size, we would take the sum of squares between groups, which is reported here in the ANOVA table, and take that number and divide into it the total sum of squares. So we take that, that 310.348 and divide it by 772.167. Now when I do that division, divide 310.348 by 772.167, I come up with a value of 0 0.40. Now this effect size of 0 0.40 according to Cohen would be considered a large effect. Anything greater than 0.14 in partial eta squared is considered to be a large effect size. So we have statistical significance and it's a large effect size. The magnitude of effect is, is very large. And then we did the post hoc test to determine that group 3 is significantly different than the remaining groups, group 1 and group 2. And so we could conclude that among the three different types of interventions that there is a statistically significant effect of the three different groups and that group 3 had the highest mean score on the exam and it was statistically significant in its difference compared to group 1 and group 2. So to summarize, we did a one-way between subjects ANOVA using planned comparisons. And so we were able to examine the main effect of the treatment. And then we were able to examine differences between the groups in a planned or preconceived way in which we we're only doing limited comparisons between the groups. And this helps us improve the statistical power of the pairwise comparisons. Is, is, and it is an alternative to using post hoc tests. So hopefully you found this video to be instructional and good luck using it in your own research.